This is Spectra. Alternative Minutes. Homeopathy. Secret Society. Hypnosis. The Paranormal. Alternative Energy. UFO. Abduction. The Weird, the Wild, and the Wonderful. With your hosts, Tom Theophanis and Scott Jordan. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Spectrum Radio Network on BBS Radio 2. This is Scott Jordan here with my co-host, Tom Theophanis, and remember, there's no such thing as too much information. Hey, Tom, how you doing this week, buddy? I'm good. How you doing? Well, what, do, what, do we, what do we got on the plate this week? Well, tonight we have Dr. Stoyan Sarg, a Canadian scientist that was born in Bulgaria. Uh, he holds an engineering diploma and a Ph.D. in physics. And until 1990, he worked as a space research scientist in programs coordinated by the former Soviet Union in collaboration with the European Space Agency. Uh, from 1990, he worked for two years as a visiting scientist at the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico that was being operated by Cornell University. Uh, at the end of 91, he immigrated to Canada and continued to work in space research projects until 2008. And currently, he is with uh, York University here in Toronto. Uh, Dr. Sarg uh, developed supergravitational univi unified theory that was reported in a number of international conferences. Uh, a review of his monograph is published in Physics uh, in Canada Journal. He has written three books in English and one in Cyrillic language. His recent book, uh, Field Proportion by Control of Gravity, Theory and Experiments, is an original approach for understanding the physics and technology of UFOs. And Dr. Sarg is convinced that he developed the development of his new technology will open a new era in our space travels. Welcome, Dr. Sarg. How are you? Thank you. I am fine. Thank you, Tom. I'm Scott. Uh, nice, nice, to, nice of you to join us. You've been a long time in the scientific institutions. Uh, where you worked in space programs coordinated by the former Soviet Union and the Western Space Program. Do you find any differences in the area of fundamental research? I am fortunate to to work in uh, different systems until 90. 90, I worked in Bulgaria, uh, but I was uh, involved in the research uh, programs coordinated by the former Soviet Union. There was a research program that involved a socialist country during that time. The program mm -hmm. name was Intercosmos. Um, this program uh, involved uh, scientists from uh, uh, this East European countries and I worked in that time in the Bulgarian Academy of, Scientists, uh, of Sciences and uh, in fact uh, during my work of this and later when I uh, immigrated to Canada but before that I used to work two years in uh, Puerto Rico uh, I found some uh, differences in the research that is uh, provided from that time on the research that is provided here. Yeah, working and, in Russia and in, uh, in, in Canada as well. Yeah, in Canada. In fact, I have been involved in uh, space research in Canada from 1991 to uh, maybe about uh, two or three years ago. Now I'm in a different department, but uh, I keep my contacts with this and it's a field that you could never, uh, <laughs> you could uh, never abandon. Right, right. Of course, uh, in the in the description for your show, we have uh, uh, UFO propulsion. Um, I think Tom has some questions about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I I, I want to find out how you came about in this idea of the uh, field proportion uh, by control of gravity. How, how did this come about? Uh, in fact, uh, during my work, even in the early years, from time to time I heard some information about such phenomena. And, uh, but the curious thing is that uh, 
in the in the scientific community this uh, topic is uh, not uh, discussed for a number of reasons later I found why is it is not discussed even uh, today but uh, this uh, this early things that I heard later helped me uh, when uh, I I uh, was uh, more involved in the research in first in the physics problems and this uh, UFO phenomenon in fact is uh, very useful because uh, it involves some uh, different kind of thinking and searching so it is not just right away suddenly to to begin this uh, research it was uh, some kind of long uh, time keeping so, me so gradually over time uh, while you you know your life as a scientist uh, you you were hearing about the UFO phenomena um, and that's how it developed now, now being a scientist why would a scientist why do scientists avoid discussing the UFO phenomena um, and even if they do a, they do you know talk about it to themselves why don't why is it out in the mainstream why do, or why would they talk about it in a negative way it is uh, something that I understood uh, later in the beginning uh, I just heard sometime that about this phenomena but uh, even they say it is uh, it is something uh, not serious because uh, it uh, the description uh, involved effects that are not explainable by the uh, by the law of physics and if you accept the, the law of physics like something proving like a definite true you could uh, throw this idea away to uh, to investigate the wherefore but uh, during this uh, long year of my research in different institutions uh, I found that uh, there is something uh, uh, when they say this contradicts the law of f physics uh, why don't examine uh, are this law of physics a final through or it is a description of some uh, frame and there is something beyond this frame of description that uh, may, may give another explanation and it appears that it is really this but uh, 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 during my research later research when I migrated here in Canada and I was able to acquaint with the much more literature I investigated even the history of physics from the 17th century and I found that uh, uh, there is some difference in the thinking of the physicist during the uh, uh, during the 19th century and 20th century and uh, this difference is, uh, appears to be something very fundamental it reflects to the concept of space okay so Stoyan you yeah. mentioned that there's some fundamental error in our thinking um, why is that? yeah this is something about uh, our concept of the space and uh, this uh, concept is adopted in the beginning of the 20th centuries uh, before that from the time of uh, 16th centuries another concept has been uh, traditionally accepted and it started from the vision of the René Descartes that the space is not empty but have some kind of substance and this concept has been uh, uh, accepted and uh, used by many great scientists uh, including uh, even Newton, Faraday, Maxwell built his uh, famous electrodynamic uh, uh, theory based on this concept but uh, in the beginning of the 20th century when uh, something is uh, uh, new was found about the the quantums of the photons of the quantum features they didn't find uh, explanation and they adopted uh, so-called uh, Copenhagen formalism they adopted some rules expressing the physical uh, laws by uh, mathematical rules um, 
then the quantum mechanic started to develop uh, pretty well that uh, they accepted that this is the way they should follow, to follow these rules. Um, some of these rules, for example, that the speed of light is, uh, uh, is uh, constant. There is no question why it is constant. You never could hear such questions in any of universities. And this is just one example. There is also other, other rules. But uh, my opinion this, during this uh, long research in the history of physics and after development, my theory is that uh, quantum mechanics is a very good but mathematical theory. It is not physical theory. It doesn't uh, uh, explain the thoroughly the physical world. So it works in some narrow field. And if you try, in fact, it is a basis of the modern physics. And if you try to explain, for example, the behavior of the UFO by the modern physics, you are stuck because uh, it, uh, it could not explain, and you say it contradicts to the law of physics. But uh, then we have to look for another framework of understanding of the concept of space that is very, very basic. Another thing is that uh, uh, all our vision about the micro world and the, uh, and the universe is based on this concept in, and uh, every experiment uh, observations uh, treated through the prisms of the concept of space. And if you try to change this concept, it may affect uh, uh, a lot of uh, abstractive built theory that is so much now that uh, it is not easy to make a change. It, may, it could be much easier to make a change uh, one century ago when this problem has been discussed. After that, it is uh, overlapped with so many other theories that... Uh, there is some uh, formal opposition for, for changing the concept of space. Mm. You write in your book um, your understanding of the theory of ether. The, uh, could you explain a little bit more about that, a, ether? Yeah, yeah. The ether theory that uh, has been uh, uh, accepted at, uh, up until the 20th century in fact, they envision some kind of uh, very fine uh, flu, but uh, in fact it is not the real physical model. There was not a real physical model to explain, uh, for example, the, uh, despite Maxwell used the, the ether, and he mentioned that uh, a material ether should be searched, but uh, there is not uh, such a model uh, suggested at that time. So even Einstein that uh, published his famous papers in the beginning of uh, the 20th century, he also speak about ether, but uh, his explanation of the uh, special reality and his uh, equations, in fact, doesn't need to, to use uh, the, the concept of ether. But... Uh, uh, strangely, when he developed uh, the, another theory, the general relativity, in uh, about, 20, about 1920, he returned to the concept of ether, but uh, he envisioned still that the ether is not uh, of material origin. And there is one book that it is, uh, it is written only from a manuscript, manuscript from Einstein that he even say that uh, without ether, the general theory is unthinkable. And many even scholar, physicists and professors, scientists, uh, don't know about this, but this book exists. It okay. is translated in English. Okay, that's interesting. So Einstein was talking about it as well. Um, could you tell me what is the origin of uh, space-time? In fact, from the concept that I developed about the ether, this concept has uh, have not been investigated never uh, in the history of physics. 